this video, there are two exercises that you should have been able to done by the end of the last video. That is, show that one is a tautology and two is a contradiction. So we're going to go over the answers to those questions. But as always, if the videos have supported you, you can join the channel for only two or five dollars Canadian a month by hitting the join button down below, or you can like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. It all helps me greatly. So thank you very much. Anyways, let's go into this. One, we need to show that A arrow B or B arrow A is a tautology. So I have set this one up. Now let's turn on the lines to make things orderly. Okay. Remember, if we want to show that alpha is a tautology, what we have to do is we have to start with not alpha and then show that we get a contradiction in every single branch so it closes. Because remember, tautologies are always true, and in order to close a tree, we need something that's false. We need contradictions in there. So what I've done is I have negated this. So A arrow B or B arrow A, I have negated this to start. Okay, so our first step is going to be lines two and lines three, and that's going to be not or decomposition on line one. So at this point, if we have not x or y, this means that we get not x and not y. So we're going to get not a arrow b in line two, and we're going to get not b arrow a. Now this is incredibly convenient because we know that a conditional not a arrow b is true when a arrow b is false, which means that a is true, and this means that b is false, which is the same thing as saying that not b is true. So for lines 4 and lines 5, if we just take a look at 2, that means we're going to get a, and we're going to get not b. So this comes from 2, and this is not arrow decomposition. Now in lines six and seven, we can repeat the same thing with not B arrow A, which is going to give us B and it's going to give us not A. And from line three, that's going to be not arrow decomposition. Now this is incredibly convenient because not only do we have one contradiction with A and not A, but we have another contradiction with not B and B. So at this point, our branch is closed and therefore we know that what we looked at is A tautology. So here's what the proof looks like without any of our lines on the page. As you can see, this was a nice and straightforward proof. And this is really just intended to make sure that you have the setup correct, which is taking alpha, our woof, and negating it to prove tautologies. If you did not do that, this will not close, and you would have found an open tree very early. So let's do number two. Not a arrow B arrow C, if and only if A arrow B arrow A arrow C, we want to show it's a contradiction, so we just take the woof and we start it. I also did the first step, which is not if and only if decomposition, because these are quite long woofs and I wanted to make sure they were neatly written. So basically, if you have not P if and only if Q, this means you have two different possibilities, either P is true and Q is false, or P is false and Q is true, which basically means our values differ. So in the left case, we've taken not on the first one, and in the right case, we took not on the second one. So let's continue on with this. Uh, let's do let's do not arrow decomposition first, because that's going to be easiest for everyone. So this means that the antecedent will be true. So in the case of two, a will be true, and not b arrow c will be true. So we're going to do the same thing on the right side with not A arrow B arrow A arrow C. So we know that A arrow B will be true, and then not A arrow C will be true as well. Or A arrow C will be false, which gives us not A arrow C being true. So these comes from line two and three, depending on which side of the branch we do. And this is once again, not arrow decomposition. Now we're going to keep going with this because we can do not B arrow C, not A arrow C, and we can break this up already. So we're going to get B and not C on the left, and we're going to get A and not C on the right. So both of these come from five, and this is once again, not arrow decomposition. Okay, at this point, we just have some complex things, so we're going to have to do some branching, but is there anything nice that I can still take care of? Well, I guess, hmm. I was going to say in line four on the right side, we could do A or O, B, but I don't really see an advantage to doing that right now. Let's, let's get the complicated stuff out of the way. So let's deal with three first. 
A arrow, B arrow, A arrow, C. This is going to give us branching paths. Either the antecedent will be false or the consequent will be true. So on the left side, we're going to get not A arrow B, antecedent being false, or we're going to get A arrow C, which is the consequent being true. Okay, so this comes from line eight. This was on three, and this was arrow decomposition. I'm going to do the same thing on the right side with A arrow B arrow C, just because we're there and it's going to be the same thing. So we'll have two branching paths. Either we're going to have that not A is true, or B arrow C is true. So in this case, it came from line two for arrow decomposition, but now we've done it in both cases. Okay, let's do lines nine and 10 here on this not A arrow B, because we know how this works. This is gonna give us that A is true and not B is true, since that's the only case where A arrow B is false. So this is from eight. And what was that? That was not arrow decomposition. Okay, I think this branch closes now. Yeah, this branch closes because we have not B and we have B, so that gives us a contradiction. What about A arrow C? This is going to branch off into two different components. Either we're going to have that not A is true or we're going to have that C is true. So that's line 11. That comes from eight and that's arrow decomposition. So both of these will close because we have not A and we have A and we have not C and we have C. So we have a contradiction in both of those branches. So that side is taken care of. What about the right side? Oh, look, I missed something. We have not A closing because we have A and not A. So really all we have left to do at this point is B arrow C. Well, let's do this then. Let's break apart B arrow C and see what happens. Uh, so we're gonna have to go all the way down to this line here, all line 12. So that'll be one thing lower, line 12. So either we're gonna get that not B is true, or we're going to get that C is true. So this comes from eight, and once again, this is arrow decomposition. Our right side will close because we have not C and we have C. But what about this not B? It still hasn't closed yet. Ah, right, that's because we still have one more well-formed formula to take care of on our right side, which is on line four, A arrow B. So let's do this one, and this should be the final one that we have to do. So if we have A arrow B, there's two things. Either not A is true or B is true. And let me get rid of the question at the top so we can fit this entire thing on one page. And when we take the lines off, oh man, it's gonna be the most beautiful tree you've ever seen in your life, I swear. Okay, both of these now close. We have not A, we have A, we have B, and we have not B, we got a contradiction. Every single branch has now closed. Let's justify this final step so that way everything is beautiful and everything is perfect. So our last thing, not A or B, this comes from line four, and this was arrow decomposition. Okay, beautiful. Every single, every single, every single branch has now closed, which means that we have a contradiction here. So the set of woofs we had were all inconsistent. We only had one woof at the top. We wanted to prove it was a contradiction. Therefore, we know this is a contradiction in the end. Anyways, that's it for these exercises. As you can see, the more things, the more operators you have in your, in your woof, the longer the tree's gonna get, the more complicated it's gonna get. It's just about going through things systematically and making sure that all your rules are correct. As long as you do that, you will always come out to a nice solution. Anyways, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll answer you when I can.